सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास सेवन हेलो डियर चिल्ड्रन हाउ आर यू आई एम अमित कुमार ठाकुर योर फ्रेंड आई हैव कम बैक टू डिस्कस द सेकेंड चैप्टर न्यू किंग्स एंड किंगडम ऑफ योर क्लास सेवन हिस्ट्री बुक I know you are enjoying playing dancing and also fighting with your friends and siblings during these days but you have to devote some of your time to your studies also so in the next half an hour we will discuss the second chapter of your history book the first important topic of your second chapter is the emergence of new dynasties dear children During the period from 700 to 750 CE we saw the emergence of many new dynasties in the subcontinent by the 7th century there were big landlords or warriors chiefs in different regions of the subcontinent they were called samantas or subordinates of the kings they were expected to bring gifts for their kings or overlords be present at their courts and provide them with military support as samantas gained power and wealth they declared themselves to be maha samanta maha mandaleshwara meaning thereby the great lord of a circle or region and so on sometimes they asserted their independence from their overlords for example danti durga a rashtrakoot chief in maharashtra overthrew his chalukya overlord and performed a ritual called hiranya garbha literally the golden womb when this ritual was performed with the help of brahmanas it was thought to lead to the rebirth of the sacrificer as a kshatriya even if he was not one by birth in other cases men from enterprising families used their military skills to carve out kingdoms for example the kadamb mayur sharman and the gurjar pratihar hari chandra were brahmans who gave up their traditional professions and took to arms successfully establishing kingdoms in karnataka and rajasthan respectively so dear children you can understand how the new dynasties were emerging in our subcontinent during these 1000 years now we come on another topic of the chapter and it is administration in the kingdoms dear children let's talk about the administrative aspect of these new kingdoms how was administration of these kingdoms run many of these new kings adopted high sounding titles such as maharaja dhiraj meaning thereby great king overlord of kings tribhuvan chakravartin meaning thereby lord of the three worlds and so on as if they are in total control of their kingdom and administration however in spite of such claims they often shared power with their samantas as well as with associations of peasants traders and brahmanas in each of these states resources were obtained from the producers that is peasants artisans traders etc the producers were persuaded or compelled to surrender 
part of what they produced by way of tax. Sometimes these were claimed as rent due to a lord who asserted that he owned the land. The inscriptions of Cholas who ruled in Tamil Nadu refer to more than 400 taxes. The most frequently mentioned tax is Vetti, taken not in cash but in the form of forced labor. Dear children, I know you are wondering what did the kings do with this revenue. Those resources were used to finance the king's establishment as well as for the construction of temples and forts they were also used to fight wars. The officers for collecting revenue were generally recruited from influential families and positions were often hereditary. This was true about the army as well. In many cases, close relatives of the king held these positions. Children, do you think that this system of administration and recruitment is still in use in our country? Certainly, it is not. Now, children, we are on another topic of the chapter and it is Prashastis and Land Grants. Prashastis were the eulogies or praise of the king by the court poets and bards. Prashastis contain details that may not be literally true. These were composed by learned Brahmanas who occasionally helped in the administration. Kings often rewarded Brahmanas by grants of land which were recorded on copper plates. Now we will talk about a very important personality and he was Kalhan the poet. Kalhan was a great Sanskrit poet of Kashmir in 12th century. He wrote a long Sanskrit poem containing the history of kings who ruled over Kashmir. He used a variety of sources including inscriptions, documents, eyewitness accounts and earlier histories to write his account. Unlike the writers of Prashastis, he was often critical about rulers and their policies. So we can see that all learned men were not writing Prashastis only. People like Kalhan were also criticizing the kings. Now dear children, we are on another topic of your chapter and it is Warfare for Wealth. Dear children, during this period from 700 to 1750 CE, most of the wars were fought for acquiring wealth. A very famous war of this period was Tripartite Struggle for the city of Kannauj in the Ganga Valley among Gurjar Pratihara of Gujarat, Rashtrakuta of Maharashtra and Pala of Bengal. During this period, temples were extremely rich. So the invading army tried to capture the temple to loot the wealth. Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni, Afghanistan raided the Indian subcontinent almost every year. His targets were wealthy temples, including that of Somnath, Gujarat. Much of the wealth Mahmud carried away was used to create a splendid capital city at Ghazni. Al-Baruni was the court scholar of Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni. He wrote his famous book Kitab ul Hind in Arbi. He consulted Sanskrit scholars to prepare this account. Kitab ul Hind is an account of Indian subcontinent. 
चहमांस और चौहानस रूल्ड ओवर द रीजन अराउंड डेली एंड अजमेर दे फॉट विद द चालुक्यास ऑफ गुजरात एंड गहरवाल्स ऑफ वेस्टर्न उत्तर प्रदेश द बेस्ट नोन चौहान रूलर वॉज पृथ्वीराज द थर्ड हु रूल फ्रॉम 1168 टू 1192 सी हु डिफीटेड एन अफगान रूलर नेम्ड सुल्तान मोहम्मद गौरी इन 1119 सी बट लॉस टू हिम द वेरी नेक्स्ट ईयर इन 1192 सी नाउ डियर चिल्ड्रन वी कम ऑन अनदर टॉपिक ऑफ योर चैप्टर एंड इट इज अ क्लोजर लुक द चोलास In this section we will study about the Cholas empire and how they emerge as a king and what is the method of their administration so the first sub topic of this section is from Urayur to Tanjavur in this sub topic we will study the political history of Chola kings how they acquire the kingdom Dear students now we will talk about the rise of Chola kings and the splendid work done by them including constructing magnificent temples earlier there was a minor chiefly family known as Mutarayyar which held power in the Kaveri delta they were subordinate to the Pallav kings of Kanchipuram Vijayalaya belonged to the ancient chiefly family of the Cholas from Urayur. He captured the delta from the Mutrayar in the middle of the 9th century. He built the town of Tanjavur and a temple for goddess Nishumb Sudni there. The successors of Vijayalaya conquered neighboring regions and the kingdom grew in size and power the pandya and the pallava territories to the south and north were made part of this kingdom the most powerful chola ruler was raj raja the first he became king in 985 ce and expanded control over most of these areas He also reorganized the administration of the empire. Raj Raja's son Rajendra the 1st continued his policies and even raided the Ganga Valley, Sri Lanka and countries of Southeast Asia. He developed a very strong navy for these expeditions. Now dear children, having understood the political emergence of Cholas we now we come on their cultural aspect the second subheading of this topic is splendid temples and bronze sculpture dear children now we will talk about the sculptural marvels built by the chola kings yes they are the big temples of tanjavur and gangai kond cholpuram built by raj raja and rajendra chola chola temples often became the nucleus of settlements which grew around them temples were centers of craft production temples were also endowed with land by rulers as well as by others the produce of this land went into maintaining all the specialists who worked at the temple and very often lived near it those specialists were the priests garland makers cooks sweepers musician dancers etc thus temples were not only places of worship they were the hub of economic social and cultural life as well chola craft was most famous for its bronze images which are considered the finest in the world while most images were of deities sometimes images were made of devotees as well 
Now we come on another topic and it is agriculture and irrigation. Dear children, developments in agriculture reached a new high during Chola period. River Kaveri was the backbone of agriculture economy of Chola land. Although agriculture had developed earlier in other parts of Tamil Nadu, it was only from the 5th or 6th century that this area was opened up for large scale cultivation. Forests had to be cleared in some regions, land had to be leveled in other areas. In the delta region, embankments had to be built to prevent flooding and canals had to be constructed to carry water to the fields. In many areas, two crops were grown in a year. Dear children, do you know that in Chola Kingdom, different methods of artificial irrigation were used. Wells and huge tanks were constructed. Construction of all these irrigation facilities required a huge and efficient planning. Most of the new rulers as well as people living in villages took an active interest in these activities. Now we come on another topic and it is the administration of the empire. Dear children, do you know that Chola kingdom was famous for its local self-government? Ur, which was the settlement of peasants, was the smallest unit of administration. They became prosperous due to flourishing agriculture. Groups of Ur formed larger unit of administration and it was called Nadu. The village council and the Nadu performed several administrative functions including dispensing justice and collecting taxes. Rich peasants of the Vellal caste exercised considerable control over the affairs of the Nadu under the supervision of the central Chola government. The Chola kings gave some rich landowners titles like Muvendavelan, meaning thereby a Velan or peasant serving three kings, Arayar, meaning thereby chief, etc., as markers of respect, and entrusted them with important offices of the state at the center. Brahmdeya were the lands granted to the Brahmanas. A large number of Brahman settlements emerged in the Kaveri Valley as in other parts of South India. Each Brahmdeya was looked after by an assembly which was called Sabha of prominent Brahman land holders. Sabha worked very efficiently. Their decisions were recorded in detail in inscriptions often on stone walls of temples. Associations of traders known as Nagrams also occasionally performed administrative functions in towns. Dear children, you must be wondering how do we know the functioning of Sabha? We know it from inscriptions from Uttar Merur in Chingalpet district, Tamil Nadu. These inscriptions provide details of the way in which the Sabha was organized. The Sabha had separate committees to look after irrigation works, gardens, temples, etc. Names of those eligible to be members of these committees were written on small tickets of palm leaf. These tickets were put into an earthenware pot from which a young boy was asked to take out the tickets one by one for each committee. Now, dear children, your favorite segment of the program, Quiz Time, has started. 
द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इज वॉट वॉज वेलन वगाई यस यू हैव टू थिंक ट्वाइस वॉट वॉज वेलन वगाई वेलन वगाई वॉज लैंड ऑफ नॉन ब्राह्मण पीज एंड प्रोपराइटर्स अनदर क्वेश्चन वॉट वॉज ब्रह्म दया इट इज द मोस्ट सिंपल क्वेश्चन बिकॉज वी हैव डिस्कस इन डिटेल ब्रह्म दया वर द लैंड गिफ्टेड टू द ब्राह्मणास अनदर क्वेश्चन फॉर यू डियर चिल्ड्रन वॉट वॉज शाला भोगा नाउ हेयर यू हैव टू अप्लाई योर नॉलेज ऑफ संस्कृत शाला भोगा वर द लैंड फॉर द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ स्कूल अनदर क्वेश्चन वॉट वॉज देव दाना डियर चिल्ड्रन यू अगेन हैव टू अप्लाई योर संस्कृत नॉलेज देव दाना वर द लैंड गिफ्टेड टू टेम्पल्स नाउ वी मूव ऑन टू अनदर क्वेश्चन वॉट वॉज पल्ली चंडम इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज पल्ली चंडम वर द लैंड डोनेटेड टू जैना इंस्टीट्यूशन अनदर क्वेश्चन विच स्टेट्स डिड गुर्जर प्रतिहार बिलोंग टू एंड वी हैव डिस्कस इट इन आर डिस्कशन गुर्जर प्रतिहार बिलोंग टू गुजरात एंड राजस्थान अनदर क्वेश्चन डियर फ्रेंड्स विच स्टेट्स डू पालास बिलोंग टू एंड यू नो यू मस्ट बी नोइंग दिस आंसर पालास बिलोंग टू बंगाल Which state did Cholas belong to? And I think you know the answer. It is the simplest question. Cholas belong to Tamil Nadu. Now another question: Who were the parties involved in the tripartite struggle? We have discussed it, and I think most of you can answer it very easily. there were three important dynasties involved in this tripartite struggle for kannauj they were number 1 gurjar pratihar of gujarat pala of bengal and rashtrakuta of maharashtra now we move on to another question what were the two major cities under the control of chamans yes it is again a very simple question you must be knowing that chamans were controlling two important cities ajmer and delhi another question which new dynasty developed in eastern part of the country and your options are a chola b palas c chamans and d rashtrakutas and i think it is the most interesting and most simple question yes you can answer it very easily they were palas another question what was the other name of the great lord of a circle and your options are a samantas b subordinates c mahamandaleshwara and d king and yes majority of student have given the right answer it is mahamandaleshwara now we move on to another question who were expected to bring gifts for their kings in 17th century and your options are a samantas b overlords c mahasamantas and d mahamandaleshwara you must apply your mind and answer this question very simple question yes majority of student have given the right answer it is a samantas when were samanta declared mahasamantas and your options are a when they bring gifts for their kings b when they provide kings with military support c when they gain power and wealth and d none of the above dear children what is the correct answer yes majority of children have given the right answer it is option c when they gain power and wealth now we move on to another question and this question is what is the literal meaning of hiranyagarbha and your options are a rashtrakutas b danti durga c golden womb d golden deer 
And what is the correct answer? Yes, majority of you have given the correct answer. It is option C, golden womb. Now we move on to another question. From whom was the revenue also collected? And the options are A. Traders B. Merchants C. Peasants and D. Artisans And what is the correct answer? Yes, you have rightly found it out and it is A. The Traders Again, another important question What is wet tea? And the options are A. Rent B. Tax C. Revenue and D. None of these so what is the correct answer dear friends yes majority of you have found it it is b a tax vetty was a tax which was paid not in cash but in the form of forced labor now we move on to another question and it is what was the use of money collected from taxes and your options are a to finance the king's establishment b construction of temples and forts C to fight wars and D all of these. So what is the correct answer dear friend? Yes, you have rightly make it. It is option D all of these. Another question. The functionaries for collecting revenue were recruited from and your options are A peasants, B artisans, C traders and D influential families. So what is the correct answer dear friend? Yes, it is option D, influential families. Another important question dear friends. Prashastis tell us how rulers wanted to depict themselves as and your options are A. Leader B. Valiant victorious warriors C. Achiever and D. All of these. So what is the correct answer dear friend? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. It is option B, Valiant Victorious Warriors. Another question. In which language was the Prashasti found in Gavalier written? And your options are A, Hindi, B, Tamil, C, Sanskrit and D, Urdu. What is the correct answer? It is option C, Sanskrit. Another question, dear friend. Who was Nagbhatta? And your options are A, Gupta ruler, B, Chakrayut, C, Malav, and D, Prithihar king. So what is the correct answer? Yes, it is D, Nagbhat was a Prithihara king. Another question for you, dear friends. Brahmanas were rewarded by grants of land recorded on and your options are A. Copper plate B. Iron plate C. Silver plate and D. None of these. So what is the answer? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer and it is A. Copper plate and the final question dear friend who invaded the Somnath temple in Gujarat? And your options are A. Akbar B. Muhammad Gauri C. Mahmud of Gajni and D. None of them. So what is the correct answer? Yes, many of you have given the correct answer. It is option C. Mahmud of Gajni. So dear children, you must have in mind that this Second chapter of your class 7 history book aims to make you understand how the new dynasties emerged, how was administration run in these kingdoms, what were Prashastis and land grants, wars were fought for wealth and we also understood about the political, cultural, economic aspects of Chola empire, focusing especially on the local self-government. With this, I conclude this second chapter of your class 7 history book. I hope you have enjoyed the discussion and learned a lot. I, Amit Kumar Thakur, will meet you in the next episode. Till then, Tata, bye-bye. 
यू आर जस्ट लिस्निंग टू करिकुलम बेस्ड प्रोग्राम ध्वनि शाला प्रोडक्शन असिस्टेंट तनु गुप्ता एंड जगबंधु जाना रिकॉर्डेड बाय बटी लैंग लिंगडो एंड प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय अजीत होरो दिस प्रोग्राम वॉज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी न्यू डेली इंडिया